Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of The Fishing Teacher and really appreciate you guys coming by the channel to watch today's video. Always uh, very grateful to have you guys around. Guys, today I wanna to talk about a little bit about some advanced techniques and strategies for maximizing the area that you found fish in. And I've got a really good example of this because I just got back from that Toyota Series Championship at Lake Wheeler and I wound up catching my fish on probably the stretch of bank that was I'm, I bet, guys, it wasn't, man, 150 feet long. And I wound up catching, you know, a, a seven keepers off at the first day, weighed almost 12 pounds, and then I had a really good bag the second day, probably close to 14 or 15, on the same 150-foot stretch of bank. And what I'm going to share with you guys today is how to maximize an area once that you do have fish, because I think a lot of people report it. A lot of people leave a lot of fish before they figured out how to catch all of them. So we'll get into that in today's video. I'm also, guys, just a couple different things, man. If you guys like the advanced bass fishing here, one of the best things you can do is just hit that subscribe button. We're really working hard to try to get to 10,000 subscribers and like those videos. That pushes the videos out a lot. And also, please uh, check out all the links I put in the description. I got some really good links in there that help the channel out, like my tackle warehouse link, the uh, my sunglass link, the solar bat sunglasses, and the uh, block of old school jigs, and the, uh, the fish the moment lake map breakdown. So if you guys are looking for some good tackle deals, um, using those links is a good way to help out. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> okay, what happened in this tournament, guys, was a prime example because I spent most of my tournament or the time that I did going up and down and up and down and up and down the same 150 foot stretch of Rocky Bank. And I'm gonna tell you guys how I completely maximized it. Now, the first thing, you don't really know how many fish are into an area until you spend time there because I didn't even practice this spot in, in practice. I went there actually the first day of the tournament because it looked good. It was just a good, nice little Rocky Bank and I pulled up there and I started fishing and I caught one on that Mega Bass Super Z2 crankbait right off the bat, a nice fish, just on the straight stretch of it there. And then I came back through and made another pass and caught another keeper. And then I made another pass to it and didn't keep, keep catch a keeper. So that first day I left it after I only fished it for like 30 minutes, I left it and I came back later in the day and caught like three more keepers there. So that told me Going into the second day of the tournament, it's like, there are fish moving up and down this thing. I said, I, maybe I should just camp out on it. And I sort of did that. I, I spent half a day on it. Well, I, once I got there the second day, because I fished a bunch of other stuff earlier in the day, but when I finally got there on the spot, I spent like two hours just back and forth, back and forth for two, almost three hours on it, catching fish pretty much every cast. And I'm gonna explain to you how I did that. So the first thing that I did, and when you're trying to maximize an area, is you're trying to get a feel for the best lure for that area. So I started out with that little Super Z2 crankbait and caught some fish, but it only ran down maybe four foot deep. So after I made a few passes with this, the next thing that I did is I tried to change some colors. And this is another thing you can do is when you find some fish, you know, go back and forth on it with the bait you're using and then once you stop catching fish, try the same bait with a different color, which I did, and I wound up catching fish on it. I went from like a blueback chartreuse to some type of shad pattern, because when you're fishing smaller areas, the fish, they see your bait over and over again. So sometimes just a slight color variation is really gonna help you out. So that's the first thing. So the next thing that I did to maximize this, I tried to figure, okay, I caught them on a crankbait, and now, maybe they want a slower bait better. So I went through there with a jig. I just sort of picked it apart slow with a jig and never had any bites. So that's an experiment you have to do. You have to figure out that mood and the personality of the fish. Then I went through it with a spinner bait. Didn't catch any fish. So that told me right off the bat that the fish are down on the rocks because they didn't want to come up on a spinner bait. The spinner bait was a few feet off the bottom when I was reeling it. And they didn't want a slow bait like a jig. So that told me that they are hiding down there in those rocks and they're, they're reacting to a crankbait that's bouncing over those rocks. And I could see on my locator that there were some rocks extending out. So I went to a deep diving crankbait and started catching some more fish. Instead of fishing that two to four foot zone, I started fishing like the five to eight foot zone and started catching more fish. This is a prime example of what I'm talking about by maximizing an area. So 
when you get into an area that has all the ingredients that holds a lot of fish. Now this area did, it was a, a stretch of rocky bank and it had deep water access right next to it. It was close to a point. So this particular area was sort of like a highway for the fish to move in and out constantly. That's what you need to look for. If you have an area that has like good cover, like in some proximity to deeper water and bait fish, because another thing this area had, it was full of bait fish. I could see bait fish all over my electronics. So when you have an area that has the, you know, premium cover, whether it be rock, wood, grass, or whatever, you got proximity to deeper water and you've got bait fish, those are the ingredients that can hold not only a large group of fish, but the fish are always replenishing itself in these type of areas. So when you get in this type of area and you and everything is checked off, you mark all, mark all those boxes that are checked off and you start catching some fish, that is when you really need to dig down and maximize that area. And that's the way you do it, guys. You start out, you, you, you get a bite or two, and you try to determine the lure category. And it's all about, you hear me talking about mood and personality of fish. So once you determine that lure category, whether it be a visual bait, a, you know, a vibrating lure, a lure that makes medium sound, loud sound, whatever. If you fit, if you, if you feel like you're dialed into that particular type of category, do some change with colors, do some change with casting angles, do some change with retrieve variations. So like in mine, I kept constantly, like I, I'd try to stop and go. I'd try straight medium retrieve. I'd try a fast retrieve try a lot of different type of retrieves until I finally hit upon the one that they want. Now, a lot of times when, you, when you're when you maximizing an area and you're cycling through different lures and you're cycling through different presentations, a lot of it is that you may not be using the axe, the best lure, but simply by giving them something a little bit different, they react to that because you're generating reaction strikes. And another thing I'll tell you guys, and I did this in the tournament too, if you have a small area that's kicking out a bunch of fish, crank up your big motor and idle through it and, and roll up the water. And that's what I did on this particular stretch. I trimmed the motor up and I sort of, I got about five foot off the bank and I goosed it and I was throwing up waves and water against the bank. Then I let it set for about five minutes and went back to it and caught fish again because by rolling that water up with your prop wash, that gets the minnows stirred up, it gets the bait fish stirred up, it gets the fish moving around, and they react to it. It's almost like you come back to a fresh bunch of fish. So that's another good way to maximize the area. So the main gist of the video is try to determine the potential of an area before you decide to maximize that area and stay there a long time. If you have an area that doesn't have that great a cover and doesn't have that much proximity to deep water, the odds are that's not gonna work. But when you got something like I just described to you where those fish are actually moving in and out of it all the time, that's when you really need to dig down and you know just figure out how to catch those fish with a lot of different ways, give them different looks, and it really pays off big time. It paid off for me in this tournament. So hope it helps out. We'll talk later.